Okay, so I've reviewed a lot of expensive cameras on my channel. This time I wanted to actually take a look at a few of the lesser expensive ones. So the first one I'm gonna review in my series is the XP Cam, which is a top seller right now on Amazon that goes for about $20. I wanted to find out if the camera was any good, so let's go. Again, so this is the XP Cam from Amazon that you can buy. It's got a pretty nice mount, I would say. Um, it articulates up and down, it doesn't articulate side to side. It has a 1080p 30 frames per second uh, capture rate and resolution. And you can also see that it's got a fixed USB cable that terminates at the end to USB-A. The cable itself is a nice length. It's just about six feet or probably 1.9 meters. Uh, so from that perspective, it'll probably fit with most setups. Another thing I like about this, given its low price, is it does have a quarter 20 mount on the bottom if you have a tripod. And speaking of tripods, it actually comes with a tiny tripod itself that you can use as an accessory for the camera. And there is an adhesive on uh, privacy shutter that you can use actually on top of the camera lens. And that's the XP Cam. And to be clear, this is in no way sponsored. I paid for the camera with my own money. It was only 20 bucks. So what I'm going to do first is actually test out its default image. After that, I'm going to try to tune the image to see if I can make it any better. Then I'll share my thoughts on whether or not this is a good camera. This is the XP Cam on standard settings at 1080p with its default built-in microphone, just to see what it looks like and to hear what it sounds like. Okay, so that was the default image. First impressions, I've got to say the microphone on the camera is pretty good. The image is a bit oversaturated, so let's try to tune that image in to see what we can get from the image from that camera. Now these are the tuned settings for the XP cam. Again, I'm at 1080p, 30 frames per second. There are other options to go down to lower frame rates as well, 720p and a lot of the other ones. Now let's take a look at some of the camera settings that I did tweak. There's nothing in terms of software for this camera, so you have to use the ones, if you're using Windows, within Windows settings. And it actually exposes quite a few different settings there, like saturation, for example, it isn't often exposed by other webcams. Okay, so let's go through some of the settings that I've set in Windows settings. So first, I took brightness down to 38. I moved up contrast to 57. Still not a lot of dynamic range in terms of shadows or anything that make it look too natural from an image perspective. Um, sharpness, I actually pulled down from, it was a higher than 50 kind of standard settings. So I took that down to 30. Um, Hopefully that helps in terms of some of the background noise that you're seeing. I don't think there's a lot of noise on my face, but uh, taking the sharpness down, even though it sounds counterintuitive, can sometimes actually remove a lot of that kind of background noise, especially in a fixed focal length camera. And in the saturation, I've taken that down to 41 because I thought the default image was a bit oversaturated. That's probably because I've got blue background lights and usually the auto kind of color balance and auto exposure, those types of things will try to balance that out. And what that will do often is oversaturate your skin tones or make them too yellow, too orange. So I've turned that saturation down quite a bit to 41 from 50. So these are the tuned settings for the camera. Again, this is the XP cam. All right, so despite my best efforts, you know, I got it to look better, but I would say the camera itself, because it's got a fairly small sensor, it is a 1080p 30 frames per second camera, but it's got a pretty oversaturated kind of image. I would say it's a bit on the yellow and orange side, probably partly because of the blue lights I have in my background, but I have, you know, fairly good uh, front key light and fill light. that's at around 5,500 Kelvins. I would say because of the focal length, the camera was maybe two and a half feet or so from my face. It actually did a good job of actually providing some background blur behind me, which doesn't usually happen for such an inexpensive camera because a lot of the lower price cameras actually focus better on the background fixed length than they do on your face. And I think this was the reverse in this case, even though the image wasn't tack sharp, it was pretty good. And I would say for $20, just the microphone alone and the way that sounded and the image I think was respectable given its price point. So I would say it's a pretty good value in terms of the camera for $20. So hopefully this was a helpful video you liked, and if you did, be sure to give me a like. Otherwise, if you wanna see more tips like this as I spend my money on other lower price or higher price webcams and do other things to work from home, be sure to subscribe to my channel. And as always, thank you for watching.